Good afternoon, everybody. This is the South African Loyalty Awards webinar, and we want to take you through a few slides to talk you through how to create a winning entry. Now, we say winning in inverted commas because unfortunately, by attending our webinar this afternoon, we can't guarantee you a winning entry. So please bear that in mind. It's not in the terms and conditions, and we just want you to have an awesome entry so that the judges can really see you put your best foot forward. So I'm going to take you through the agenda today. We're starting exactly on time. Scheduling a webinar at the moment is quite tricky and quite challenging because of um, load shedding and other challenges we're all facing. So thank you to all of you who are attending and I hope this is a really useful exercise. So I'm just changing screens for you. There we go. So the introduction I'll take you through myself and Lauren as your hosts today in a moment. We want to just confirm the dates for 2020. We'll then take you through the different awards categories. Then most importantly, sections four and five, how to enter and what the judges are looking for. And finally, I'll just reintroduce our panel of judges for you in the judging process. So in terms of an introduction, I'm going to turn the uh, video on for a second just so you can see us in real life. So we're really here. So myself, Amanda Cromhout, I'm the judging chair of the Loyalty Awards and Lauren, my colleague, who's with Truth Consulting. So I'll take you through today and then obviously we will capture any questions that you send to us through the Zoom link. There's a process through Zoom UA. You can just put your questions we'll collect them and then we'll answer them at the end. So we won't respond if you put your hand up. I know that's a function in Zoom. We will respond at the end to, I'm sure we'll get through all the questions. So please don't worry if um, there's a burning question at a point in time. So I'm going to put the screen back on for you. And we'll take, we'll go straight into the presentation. So the dates for 2020, these are available on the website, but just a quick reminder, the entries close on the 31st of July. So we've just got over two weeks to go. These were obviously extended after we asked the uh, loyalty industry in South Africa when they were due to close in May, we actually suggested that we extended those dates. So that's been great. Everyone's had two more months to make a even better entry for the judges to judge. The entry fee process will come after that. So we'll collate all the entries and then an invoice will be sent to you on the 3rd of August and then settlement immediately so that we can proceed to distribute all of the entries. Once we've checked all of the details have been correctly collated and correctly sent and then the judging can start thereafter in August. That judging process I'll take you through later in the webinar, but it starts in August, but it's a two to three week process for the remote judging. It's a very thorough process. And then we have a judging finalization day, so to speak, and I'll take you through that as well. And then we will have a date, an exact date for the winner's announcement in October. So the actual awards categories, the next slide is gonna show you all of them and I'm just gonna quickly take you through them. So you'll see here that we have 15 categories and one by one I'll quickly describe them. This has gone up from last year based on feedback from the market, feedback from the judges. So I hope you will find within this criteria, I hope you'll find the ones that you wish to enter. You're not limited to one entry. So if you feel, if you're a retailer and you feel you want to enter best program of the year, you also want to, op you want to enter the most innovative use of technology and the best use of data, then you can enter more than one and we obviously welcome that. You would just have to make sure that the entry is specific for the category. So what I mean by that is when you download the entry forms, you will see they're very specific according to that particular category. So the first one, best program of the year, last year's winner was Clicks. And I'm not going to go through all the details here, but just to let you know that if you want to read what the judges said about clicks, if you want to read why they were awarded this uh, first place position for best loyalty program in retail, it's all available on the Loyalty Awards website. 
The next category is financial services, best program. And the last year, the winner was eBooks. So again, you can read about it on the website. Best program of the year, restaurants and QSR. Last year's winner was Kauai. Best program of the year, travel and leisure is actually a new category. We did find that we had some travel and leisure entries last year, but we didn't have a separate category. So that justifies a separate category. Then we have best program of the year B2B. So obviously the B2B loyalty industry is a powerful tool. So we'd love to hear from any companies who are succeeding in the B2B loyalty environment. Best program of the year, hair and beauty salon. So we're seeing some awesome programs around the country. They've obviously had a torrid time with lockdown. So I'm really hoping that hasn't delayed any of the process. We'd love to hear from you. Best program of the year for small business. And it's very difficult actually to confirm exactly the definition of a small business, but what the judges confirmed they thought was appropriate was one to 20 outlets or stores. And in the e-commerce environment, because obviously you don't have a store footprint if you're a small business, you can justify your positioning as a small business in your entry. And then finally, in best program, of the uh, the open category. So if your business doesn't fall in any of the above, please don't be put off. Please send us your entries as the open category. We saw last year that My School, My Village, My Planet won the open category. Whereas now this year, there are quite a few community programs or campaigns in the marketplace. So we've also introduced that, which we're talking about here, the best community or environmental initiative. We then wanted to recognize us, our suppliers to the industry. So we've inc included for the first time the best loyalty technology vendor of the year and equally the best loyalty data vendor agency of the year. Last year, we did have best short term marketing campaign of the year, and this was won by Vodacom. And I know that they are continuing this campaign. So I think the numbers are gargantuan for what they won last year might even be bigger at the moment. Then the best use of data analytics and CRM applications. This was won by Sunlam Reality last year. And then the most innovative use of technology for loyalty and the winner last year was eBooks. Finally, we've introduced best use of multi-channel loyalty communication or engagement and including social media. So if you're succeeding to really reach your customers and engage with them through multi-channel, we believe that this is the way to go. So this would be a really beautiful way to be able to recognize that and allow brands to enter for that particular category. So there's 15 different categories. So just to remind you, Please feel free to enter more than one if you feel your program's appropriate, but you can't necessarily carbon cut and paste your entry because each category when you download it off the website definitely does have different questions and different criteria that the judges will judge the category by. So this is the main reason I think you've all given, generously given up your time, how to enter, and I think number five, what the judges are looking for. So how to enter. Really straightforward, I'll, I'll go through these and then we'll unpack them slightly, but read the rules. I don't want to sound like a bossy school teacher when I say that, but there is, the rules are available. They're called the small print available on the website. Please read them. It's worth reading them because it just outlines exactly what is required, how to enter the deadline, the file format and so forth. So we will go into that slightly in just a moment, a little bit more detail there. Remember, as I said, you can do multiple categories. So select the appropriate category. Please try and enter the right category. If you have any questions um, about which category to enter, you can reach out to us and we can guide you if you're not sure. We've already answered a couple of those questions from brands who are saying, well, we do this and this, so we're not sure which category to enter. Then obviously you create your submission and we're going to go into that now. You submit your entry and we're going to go into that also. And then afterwards, first week of August is paying the entry fees. So just a couple of things. All of this detail is readily available on the website and on your entry form. So when you take the right category entry form, 
this information is there. So what I just want to highlight is what we require at the top. So the entry contact information, so it's very important that we can get hold of you. We might have clarifying questions. There will be a request for a one page executive summary. And I will go through this in a short while. And then the actual submission to be a maximum of three pages. And you can supply supporting evidence, whether it's advertising, whether it's PDFs or screenshots of maybe BI tools or a video, but please maximum of five items per entry. The one page executive summary, the maximum three pages submission and the maximum five items is very important and I'll explain that later. So please keep to those guidelines and there is a reason for that. What I'm saying here is less is more. If you keep to the guidelines, that is better than overshooting the guidelines and providing three times as much information. The entry fee is 1,500 plus VAT per entry per category. And as we said, the dates for the invoice is the first week of August. The email address for which you'll send it to, again, it's all available to you. Should you feel your um, file sizes are too big, for example, if you've got a video, obviously please feel free to let us have it via Dropbox or WeTransfer. You just need to make sure we get everything in, you know, on time through the different channels. Last but not least, we have some, um, some entries last year were very well supported by agencies or vendors. Obviously, we have a couple of categories now for uh, vendors, whether it's technical vendors or data suppliers. If you are an agency submitting on behalf of your client, so let's say you want to enter best campaign of the year, but you're the agency and not the actual brand, Please, you'll see in the small print and all the documentation on the website, we require a signed agreement that your brand agrees for you to enter them. So that's really important. We don't, we can't receive anything without the actual brand as well. Now, obviously, if you're entering best technical vendor, we don't need, and you're using a case study of, for example, pick and pay, we don't need pick and pay's permission if you are the vendor. Uh, but if you're giving away confidential information, then obviously you do need their permission. They're your client and you sign an NDA with them. But it's for the, it's for the categories where you're not an agency as a data or a technical vendor, you definitely need permission. So what the judges look for, this is super important. So again, how to create a winning entry to really get the judges on side, so to speak. Please, again, don't want to be like a teacher, but keep within the rules, keep within the maximum number of pages. I will, I will explain that now. I said it earlier and I've said it again. The judges may have up to 50, maybe less, because we obviously, um, I'll take you through the process in a moment, but they may have 40 or 50 entries to judge across different categories. And obviously if one particular brand maybe, maybe has a world-class entry, but has given three times the amount of pages, A, the judges just don't have that capacity to take it all on, and B, it's not actually fair because we don't have a like-for-like like volume of information per entry. And it really is important that you keep within that, that maximum number for the executive summary or the supporting evidence so that it's all aligned and the judges know when they turn the page for the new entry, what are they going to be looking at? Three pages, not 40 pages and try and make the judges lives easy because at the end of the day they're they're trawling through information 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 so the small print really gives you a sense of how to do that the category name uh, naming convention for your entry is super important because it makes the judges life easy for them to be able to say okay i'm a judge on category 1 I'm judging now Royal Rewards Hotel. And you'll see there, it's Royal Rewards, sorry, at the Royal Hotel. So we're asking for you to say category one, the name of the program and the name of the brand. So hopefully that's straightforward. And then what we also need you to include somewhere in your submission is what does your program do? You may be South Africa's biggest loyalty program. Please don't assume that judges know what your program is because some of our judges are international and I'll explain to you why when I introduce the judges. 
And actually, some of the South African judges through last year's process didn't necessarily know the real detail of what a program does. They just can judge based on what was submitted. And again, less is more. So I'm going to give you an example now of best program category criteria. So the best program, if you remember, covered many of the first categories, whether it's retail, financial services, uh, community and so forth. What we asked for in the entry form, so this is all available for you to see, but the next pages are not available for entry forms. What I'm about to show you on the next slides aren't available on the entry forms, but these four bullet points are. So we ask you to illustrate the commercial benefits for the brand, the enhanced value for its customers, the broader customer strategy approach, and the frictionless customer experience. Now, what do we mean by that? I think what you're here for today is to understand, okay, so, so what, Amanda? Commercial benefits for the brand. Let's have a look at what we actually as judges are looking for. So some obvious pieces are return on investment. We're also looking for incremental uplift. So if you can prove that your loyalty program has managed to bring incremental performance for the business, what we mean by that is additional performance that wouldn't have happened without the loyalty program. What are the activity levels of your program and state what your definition of active is, is it once in 12 months? The reason this is important is we as judges have a view of what is a good loyalty program in terms of activity le levels, incremental uplift, redemption rates, percentage of sales through loyalty. So you may have a program that has 10% of your total sales through loyalty, but actually maybe we're looking for 70% of sales through loyalty to show that you've got great coverage. So we need to see that. And obviously we need to know that it's put into the submission with complete um, transparency and so forth. What is the basket size growth? Not necessarily what is the basket size versus non-members because maybe your most loyal members have just automatically selected membership, but what is the basket size growth or what is the frequency growth proven because of the loyalty program? What we also want to see here is please don't just supply percentages. Please give real numbers and everything you supply is fully protected under a confidentiality and I'll take you through that of what the judges have had to sign up to, to protect you because we can't judge unless we get proper commercial input. The, the brands that win are the brands that can showcase their absolute um, performance. So enhanced value for your customers. So the second criteria, how is your program outperforming competitor programs? Maybe you don't have the commercial results of your competitor program, but you can prove, for example, if your value proposition gives away 5%, but your competitors only gives away 1%, or maybe you give away monetary return in other ways. What has been customer reaction? Maybe you measure it through net promoter score, maybe you measure it through other means, but whatever you can show giving customers view in pre and post the program. And tell us what your program offers. Again, this is just reminding you that Please don't, um, please don't expect the judges to know exactly what your program does. As I say, some are internationally based, ex-South Africans who are overseas, and others are actually international folks, but most are South African. But even the South African team might not know the details of your brand or your program. We are also looking to how loyalty plays a role in the broader customer strategy of your business. So talk about that. What is the customer centricity within your brand? What strategy do you follow? How do you use the data acquired through your loyalty program to drive that customer centricity? And what are the results? Real numbers, please, and percentages. And how does it drive a broader business strategy? All of those will be taken into consideration. Finally, the criteria on the best program are frictionless customer experiences. So showcasing the ease of use for earn, burn capa capability, or maybe the member portal where I can find out my points or see the transactions, whatever level of interaction I might need with the brand, how easy is it to do that? What is the seamlessness of the customer experience across all touch points? 
and ensure and finally how do we ensure that the loyalty program doesn't add friction to the customer's interaction with your brand so these four criteria this this slide and the previous three slides are all the main criteria for the best program now as i said there are 15 categories it's not necessary for us today to go through every single one what we found when i looked through all of the entries is most of them are covered through similar type questions but i thought there were three more i wanted to add to that what are the other criteria? for example showcasing best innovation so if you believe you have the most innovative program or the most innovative way a customer can burn their rewards or even just the most innovative small part of enrolling for your program please showcase that so if you are first to market with a whatsapp registration process we want to see that we want to hear that and then showcase how your clients if you're an agency or your own program so obviously a lot of these categories are for maybe the vendor um, technical or data vendors how your program has improved business and obviously multi-channel offerings so i haven't answered every single question of every single criteria put within all of the different entry forms but the broader approach covers the what i've covered now covers pretty much all of those criteria requested across the different 15 entry forms so finally and then i'll obviously open up to questions um, we did say the webinar is between 25 and 30 minutes so what i want to just take you through now are the judges so our judging panel are i am actually not personally a judge on this process because our work we do as truth we're very involved in so many programs that we're too conflicted and I'll take you through the conflict of interest process we work with our judges so we as the truth team particularly Lauren and myself we work as administrators of the pro of the awards and we I'm the judging chair which means basically we ask the right questions of the judges to get them to debate and come up with final winners when we get to that stage so our judges we have i'll take you through them very briefly i'm not going to give you a full bio of each of them they are available on the website so angelo clayton is now based in australia for Woolworths south uh, sorry Woolworths australia so it's not in conflict at all but he has worked across many of the main retailers in south africa i had the pleasure of working with him when i was at Woolworths and he's now based offshore but he has great experience of understanding the south african marketplace and the technical side of loyalty matt oldham is a british gentleman i've known him for years i sit with him on the judging panel of the loyalty magazine awards in the uk he's very experienced he used to work for avios in the uk and he now has his own business but matt also a lot of experience in the, in south africa because he brought he was part of the team that brought avios originally to south africa and hence why i've asked him and he's also extremely um deeply understands loyalty from the experience i've had working with him candace goodman is south african based and she runs her own business in i can't say mobile marketing because it's much broader than that but she really gives us a lens over the digital and mobile environment Nick Bednall is no longer in the actual loyalty world per se, but has deep experience in it, was previously his last role before he ventured off to do other things, was in Y Group. So he deeply understands the technical approach to running a good loyalty program and the seamlessness of the customer experience. Wendy Nola probably doesn't need any um, introduction, but she's obviously consumer PR and she really brings a lens of the customer she's extremely invaluable to this process i really enjoyed working with her last year bromin roland was at pick and pay for many years for oh, probably 20 years or more and she now was working i think she's still working with tcs um, but she's a very exp experienced retailer across south africa deeply experienced in it and marketing i actually had the pleasure of working with bromwin on the launch of the pick and pay program many years ago the smart shopper program 
Andrew Hall is UK based, but he's South African. He ran an agency in South Africa called Hero, very, very focused on CRM. So Andrew comes more with an angle of CRM rather than pure loyalty and campaign approach. Um, very, very experienced and has delivered some phenomenal campaigns I've seen across the South African market. Sonia Fauri, she runs her own consultancy, but Sonia used to be head of ABSA Rewards. So it's nice to have the deep financial services uh, background through Sonia. And then Eunice Patel, he is actually the only uh, judge who's employed by one of the brands and he, one of the brands in South Africa, not one of the brands you necessarily submit. And he still works, he's not left the business, he works for Virgin Active, so they're having quite a tough time at the moment with uh, shut lockdown. But Eunice definitely excuses himself if there's any conflict of interest with any partners that work with Virgin and so forth. But I know Eunice very well from work we've done in the past with Virgin Active and he has a very analytical brain and I, I value his experience. So the process, all of the judges have signed a code of conduct, which means they are bound by absolute confidentiality and having worked with each and every one of the individuals we've recruited onto the judging panel, I know they have the integrity to keep that confidentiality. They wouldn't be as senior and successful as they are without that. And then I think it's really important to stress their conflict of interest. So should there be a conflict of interest that maybe their company supplies one of the brand's submissions in say category two, they pull out entirely of category two, or maybe a competitor brand to some of a company they're supplying to is also in category three, they would pull out of category three. So we have, as truth, the administrators of the awards, we have quite a tough, not tough, but a tricky time of, pulling judges out before the judging starts. So that's why there's quite a long period from when we get the judge, the entries before the judges can start their work because we have to sift through everything, check every, all the paperwork there, check everything signed, check agency agreements are signed, and then approach the judges to say, anyone work with ABSA or anyone work with Sanlam Reality? And then we pull them out of that, or a competitor to each of those brands, then we pull them out. So we need lots of judges because we end up with some categories where one, one judge last year who's declined to be on the panel because of this found that she actually could only judge one category last year. So she was great value for that one category, but she didn't want to be conflicted again. So as I said, there's re remote judging. That the remote judging, we email your entries to the judges. That's why the file name capturing is very important and that you keep within the, the number of pages because the judges will receive maybe 10, we, we go up to a maximum of 10 entries per category, so we will shortlist if there are more than 10. And they, they may be receiving 10 entries per category, but obviously they won't all be doing 15 categories. But please bear that in mind when you're doing your entry. And the judging day is, won't be face to face this year obviously because of social distancing but last year it was incredibly powerful whereby after the judging remote judging is submitted back to us we add up the scores we triple check that everything's been done correctly if there is a very clear winner per category we literally present that back to the judges and say no debate required this brand is the winner of category one we only open the floor to debate and we'll obviously do it through zoom or whatever with our judges if there is a close call for the first one or two places and that is a very important debate because sometimes a judge is misunderstood or it's just literally one point between two two players so the judging day is very exciting because there's a lot of heated debate but effectively the better your entry obviously the clearer it is for judges as I said, my role as the judging chair, I just thought it'd be worth sharing with you. Um, I'm a judge also on the Loyalty Magazine Awards that have just issued all of their awards. I also had to decline quite, uh, I had to decline one entry that actually went on to win. I say decline, recuse myself, sorry, from the category because they were a client of ours and they actually went on to win Best Loyalty Program in Africa and Middle East. 
So it's really important that you are rest assured that conflict of interest is taken into account from competitor point of view and actual brand point of view and that the confidentiality is, is um, respected entirely. So please, knowing that, please give concrete statistics to support your entry. And as a judge of on the Loyalty Magazine Awards, I know when I open a file and an entry hasn't kept to its minimum, the correct number of pages, my heart simply sinks. So I'm just saying that to you, we as, we as the administrators as truth cannot edit down your entry. We can't do that and we don't have time to ask you to redo it and we won't send it back to you and say do it again. But what I'm saying is, it, so don't think please that by just sneaking in an extra two pages it will help you, it actually hinders you. I know as a judge the minute the rules aren't kept to I, I, I get just anxious because I've got so many entries to get through. So I hope that explains why we're being pretty strict. It's not because we want to be, it's just because we want to make it fair and equitable. So I'm going to open the floor to any questions. I'm just going to quickly look on our Q&A and actually no questions have been submitted. So you can please just, I don't think we can hear your inbound voice. So if you have questions, there is a little tab. I'm going to take the PowerPoint off for a moment and then you'll see myself and Lauren again. And at the top of, at the bottom of your screen, I'm just looking at the Zoom screen here, bottom right hand side, there's a Q&A button that you can type in your, in your questions. There's something, there's something I can read here on the chat. <laughs> Someone's just said we look chilly, we're both wearing scarves. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Yes, we're, we're warm now because we're wearing warm scarves. Okay, any questions, anybody? Um, I'm just going to wait a little while because it might take you a couple of seconds to write your questions. But if you have heard enough from us, you can obviously leave the webinar. If you want to ask questions now, please do. We'll wait for a little while. Um, oh, our ones come in. So please wait, everyone. This is, um, hi, this is Belinda from Clicks Club Card. No question, just thank you for a succinct explanation. Appreciate it. Thanks, Belinda. Appreciate that. And good luck again. You've got quite high expectations having won last year. So good luck for that. Just keep checking. Okay, I'm going to take Lauren and me off the screen so you don't have to stare at our face. I'm going to put the presentation back up. If you wish to leave now, the webinar is over unless we receive any more questions. We'll stay online for a few more minutes. And then the webinar, we just need to edit it and then it will be available um, for downloading. We can actually send this to you all directly if you want it because you participated and then it'll be available if anyone else asks for it. So I'm going to share the screen again um, just so that the presentation is back on and then we'll check for any more questions. But feel free to leave us now. The webinar is over apart from questions. Thanks so much for your time and good luck with your entries. We can't wait to receive them. Uh, we have another question from Lee Morrison. I think you answered the question, but will this video or Prezo be available here after for us to make use of? Yes, it will. Because we have your email address now for registering. So um, I'm not sure exactly where we're going to post the, the video, but we'll make sure you have access to it. So thanks, Lee.
We have a question from Lauren. Are you able to give any guidance on the supporting files? Is it creative media files you're looking for or supporting documents to support numbers and stats? It's a great question, Lauren. Thank you. So um, it depends, I think, what category you've entered. So for example, if you've entered best campaign, we would love to see the stats. Maybe you have a BI dashboard screenshot that really proves it, or maybe the best campaign can be best illustrated by um, some creative that you want to showcase why it was so powerful because the creative execution was so powerful. Um, so it really depends. Like some brands I know, um, when, when I was a judge on the UK Loyalty Magazine Awards submitted videos, I'm not suggesting you go out to the expense of creating videos now, but maybe you already have a video that you used for staff training or so whatever makes the li life easier for the, for the judges to understand your program and understand what you're, what you're trying to achieve through it. So please don't just send supporting evidence just because it is beautiful creative if you're not trying to back up the actual story of why you should win whatever category you're entering. So I hope that's answered your question. If it hasn't, we can stay online and keep talking. Okay, so Lauren and I are still here. Um, there's a few of you still left online, but there's no more questions I, unless anyone's typing at the moment. So I've answered three, three questions that have come in. Kieran, sorry, let me look at your question. Sorry, I was looking somewhere else. Kieran, for a program with a lot of possible supporting documents, can we create a summary of all of that in a single document? <laughs> um, yeah, so I think, but please make sure this, the supporting document isn't then 20 pages long. You know, I, I really just want to emphasize my experience as, as a judge. Our judges are giving up their time willingly and they're not getting paid for it. So. Uh, the, the more succinct you can be, the better. I really do stress less is more, but make the less speak louder. So if you have 20 screenshots of results, you could maybe do an executive summary of the results and then show one example of the screenshots so that, so that effectively the judges almost see the integrity of the results. So what is, um, What's very important is we can't actually prove whether your results are right or wrong, you know, so we rely on the brands to be honest in their submissions um, and obviously everyone should be. I mean, no one wants to win a race if they didn't complete it properly. So I really believe you can you can put them in a single document, um, but you might need separate file formats, for example, if you had a movie to show a little video or um, a screen, a beautiful picture of a creative execution and so on. So um, it's up to you, but hopefully that answers your question, but try not to make the supporting document too long and too laborious for the judges to go through. 